All I see here and um wait something out right quick. Taking care of my business, taking care of some business. <laughs> I don't even know what that is and what the heck. Okay. Anyway, waiting for TikTok to call people on. But anyway, y'all know I always put my videos on Facebook. Anyway, y'all, I'm just sitting here. So I decided to come here and share some thoughts. So today I'd like to talk about identifying and acknowledging our triggers. Because we all have them. We all have triggers. And I think that the more we start to acknowledge our triggers and accept what they are instead of trying to deal with them or or, or uh, manage them, sometimes you have to manage your triggers and then there are times that you can just completely abstain from being around certain things that trigger you. A lot of times the main things that trigger us and the reason why they affect us so heavily is because our main triggers is a lot of times our family members. Sometimes our parents, mothers, fathers, siblings, you know, um, our marriage partners. Um, and sometimes it could be, you know, um, people you work with. People have many triggers. But I want to talk about our personal triggers because, you know, we never stop being refaced with the things. Even when we've learned lessons, it does not mean those lessons will not resurface. It's just that when they do resurface, we now we're aware of it. We're cognizant of it. So we don't have to go through the same thing that we went through in the past when we wasn't aware of it. Right. And sometimes we be aware of our triggers and we deal with them anyway, because that's my mama, that's my family, that's my cousin, that's my best friend and all of that type of stuff. Like those are just titles, y'all. Those titles, in my opinion, now these are just my opinions and experiences. I ain't speaking for the world. I'm just speaking for those who resonate or want to see things from a different perspective. Those triggers should not be based upon titles in order for us to put it in perspective of how much toxicity or aggravation we want to deal with. Because dealing with aggravation up to a certain degree is your choice. It becomes your choice, especially when you in a place to where you're not codependent on your family. A lot of people have to deal with that because their families are helping them in some way, form or fashion, financially with their children. They need a support system. They don't have nobody else. In those cases, a lot of times we suffer dealing with those triggers with our family members and our close relatives because that's that be the reason why we don't have nobody else. But when it comes to a place in your life to where you know you don't have to be bothered with that and you allow yourself to go through it anyway at that point it's self-torture because we will put up with all of that from relatives family members and parents and, and partners but we want to hold everybody else accountable like what makes you feel like these people shouldn't be held accountable you know what i'm saying now, i'm just gonna use myself as an example and i've had people say things to me behind this but my mother is a trigger for me. She's a, a serious trigger for me. She's very serious, a trigger for me. And it's because of her negativity. She's just carries a lot of negativity and she don't see herself. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be around that because you start being around somebody that's always talking about something negative and then they start repeating themselves, talking about the same negative stuff over and over and over and over and over. And you just be like, why are we still talking about what? Would you sleep? Would you shut up? You know, and then you don't want to be rude or disrespectful to them. So you just be quiet and you sitting there getting aggravated. And then when they leave, now you done, your whole day drain. You got a headache because you done dealt with a toxic parent. But for me, I can't deal with my, with, with, with my with my mother like that. So I don't, we can't talk. I can't be around her. You know, if I could see her and love her from a distance, but I cannot be around her because she's a trigger for me. But how many people can really admit that about themselves, about their lives, about their family, and actually stand by not allowing themselves to be put in that position just because it's your parent you can love your parents from a distance society got us so twisted up they got us thinking that we have to you know put our mental health and emotional health on the line because it's our relatives it's a family member no you don't 
That's just me. I can't speak for everybody else. Y'all do what y'all want to do. But I'm not I'm not going to put my mental health on the line for nobody. Not even my own kids. I don't give a damn who it is. You're not going to drive my ass 10 bricks above, you know. I'm not you ain't going to have me walking around here apple short of a pie. You know? No. I'm just not going to do it especially if I don't have to. Everybody should be held accountable for their for their ways. You know? Um You just got people out here that's putting up with stuff that it's just like why do you keep putting yourself through these same karmic cycles because it's your family stop allowing these titles if these people do not live by these titles and they're not owning these titles then stop stop giving these people that much leeway and control in your life because that's really all it is and because we do that they know they got control over us so a lot of times they'll deliberately do things to cause you aggravation they'll deliberately do things to throw blockages in your way they'll deliberately do things to make you miss opportunities just because they know that you're going to kowtow to them or uh because they're your relatives because they're your parents because they're your spouses because they're your children fam they could be very manipulative in that way I don't feel like nobody should let nobody have that much control in their life. There should nobody have that much power and control over your life more than you. And when you will find yourself in a situation to where you constantly going in the same circle, having the same conversation, being aggravated about the same thing over and over again for years in your life, that is now your fault. Well, they don't want to grow up. Well, why are you worrying about what they don't want to do with their life? Go live your life and let them stay where they're at. If we really learn how to make everybody be accountable for their foolishness or their ways, instead of trying to put up with it while it's beating us up, I feel like a lot of us will be able to really acknowledge and identify our triggers and deal with them accordingly. You got to learn how to stay clear of people and things that trigger you in a negative way. You just got to learn how to do it because people will think that they could come into your life and bring all this energy to you and you're supposed to sit there and just allow them to do that because of whatever title or position they have they use that against you and they think that they could throw their weight around because they're your family and your relatives and people you've been knowing a long time because they didn't did something for you 10 years ago now they think you're forever indebted to them because when you didn't have nowhere to go they let you stay in their house listen quit thinking y'all old people the rest of y'all damn life because they did something to help you at a point in time in your life and that's what we're put on this earth to do, help each other. If you feel like you owe somebody your life, then you got to ask yourself, was that person really genuinely helping you? Or was it something just to keep connections or keep a toxic connection to you for control? Because people do that too, you know? And a lot of times we allow that to happen. We still dragging people in our lives from 20, 20 years ago, you know, because of one, two things they did for us when we ain't had nobody else. Thank you. I love you. I done paid you back a thousand times. Now it's time for me to let you go and move on with my life. I don't have to still be here sitting in your face, coming to all your events. I don't have to, I don't have to keep talking, cow talking to you because you did something for me. But people don't realize that those things become triggers to you. And then the next person who might be genuinely wanting to do something for you, you treating them the way you should be treating the person that's trying to keep tabs on you because of what they did for you. Sometimes those could be our relatives too. Sometimes they could be our parents. Parents and children can be the two most manipulative people in our lives, especially when they're not right, and relatives, especially when they're not right. And then people got the audacity to get mad at people when they start becoming very particular about their energy. If you ain't serious about protecting you don't expect nobody else to be ain't nobody gonna protect your space but you ain't nobody gonna protect your energy the way you do so if you know that there are things in your life and people that are triggers in a negative way to you don't call to that you know what i'm saying if you can love people from a distance you are not wrong for protecting your sanity you ain't wrong for that because ain't nobody gonna have me walking around here drinking and smoking because that'll let them get on my nerves you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to have me out here getting gray hair and and I'm almost 50 and I ain't got it yet. Let my gray hair come natural. I ain't finna get it because I'm letting somebody else give it to me. Is, is what I'm saying. So I just wanted to talk about that. Do we really acknowledge our triggers and are we honest with ourselves about it? Because there's a lot of grown men and women walking around here right now harboring resentment for their parents and their mothers and their fathers, but they don't want to tell them how they feel because they love them. 
You can listen. One ain't got nothing to do with the other. I love you, but I'm finna tell you about yourself. You have a problem. You have a problem, I and mean, you need to go get some help. And until you do, I'm not coming around you. Period. You you see what I'm saying? I've had to tell. I've I've told my a, a child of mine that. You know, I stay away from my mother because she or anything that triggers me negatively. I don't give a damn who it is. You got to go. It's just that simple. You got to go. I'm not getting ready to commit and obligate myself to nobody on the planet, planet Earth who do not respect me enough to not do things to aggravate me. And the thing is, our parents and a lot of our, our relatives, they be suffering from mental problems. And then they don't want you to have no peace because they miserable. So they want to bring the misery to you because they get, they can't stand the fact that you got so much peace in your life. So they got to figure out how they could get in and aggravate you and see what. No, no, mm -mm. you don't ever answer your phone. I know because y'all don't want it. What do y'all, what do you want? You don't want nothing. What you calling me for? I don't want to hear about nobody else's negative problems. What you want? Unless you inviting me out to eat because <laughs> you about to, you know what I'm saying? Unless you inviting me somewhere to eat. Okay, or you want to go do something fun or something that's, you know, uh, uh, um, happy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not answering my phone for nothing else. I don't want to talk on the phone. What do you want? I don't, I don't want to use my energy that way. What are you finna do with my energy? What are you getting ready to do with the time that I'm about to open my space up and give you? What are you going to do with it? And a lot of times people just want to drain your energy, suck you dry, going about their business after they done got refilled up from draining the hell out of you. You know, and then now you sitting there feeling like you having anxiety attacks because somebody else has done called you and triggered you. So do we know our triggers, y'all? Do we know them? Do we acknowledge them? And do we know how to put them in perspective to where it's not causing us unnecessary stress and aggravation in our lives? Because a lot of times I'm telling you right now, when you start giving people the type of, of power over you because of a title, that's where you mess up at. Because nine times out of ten, the people that got the most power of influence in your life, a lot of them are toxic as hell. And a lot of them are triggers to you. And a lot of y'all don't see it. A lot of y'all won't see it. A lot of y'all don't want to acknowledge it. But those are things you need to start paying attention to and being honest with yourself about. How do you feel after this person leave you? Were you feeling in a high vibration or feeling good? But then when you left that person, now you starting to feel... Your, your whole vibration just sunk down. You know, your whole attitude just went womp, womp, womp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How do they make you feel? Do you Are you agitated after you walk away from somebody or they leave your presence? You know, do you feel tired? Are you drained? How do you feel after you get off the phone with somebody? How do you feel after you leave a function around certain people? All that stuff matters because if it does anything of the opposite, other than making you feel good or keeping your vibrations uplifted, then you got to think about how those places and things and people are triggers to you and you need to acknowledge it so you can take notes so you can start avoiding those people, places and those things as much as you can for as long as you can. You know what I mean? So on that note, that's all I wanted to talk about was just acknowledging our triggers because what people don't like to do is acknowledge a lot of times that your triggers a lot of times be your parents, your surroundings, your so-called best friends, your so-called spouses, sometimes your kids. And these people with these titles that know that they have a place in your life of influence sometimes can use those things against you to have power and control over your life. And next thing you know, you're going through unnecessary stress for no reason when all you got to do is learn how to practice the art of detaching from things that does not serve you any higher good. And on that note, I hope y'all are having a, a beautiful week. And um, I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.